This program is brought to you by Cable Franchise Vs and generous donations from viewers like you. All right, welcome to the planning, uh, Amherst Planning Board meeting of August, uh, or excuse me, September 16th. Um, Yes, uh, September 16th, 2020, based on Governor Baker's exec executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GLC 30A, section 20, and signed Thursday, March 21st, uh, 12th, 2020, this planning board meeting is being held virtually using the Zoom platform. My name is Jack Jemsink, and I will be the acting chair for this planning board meeting. I am calling this meeting uh, to order at 6.33 p.m. This meeting is being recorded and is available via Amherst Media Livestream. Minutes are being taken as normal. I will now take a roll call. Uh, board members, when you hear your name called, unmute yourself, answer affirmatively, and, and uh, please place yourself back on mute. So, Maria Chow? Here. And uh, Tom Long? Here. Uh, Andrew McDougall? Here. And Doug Marshall? Present. Janet McGowan? Here. And Johanna Newman? Okay, she's not here. Um, so, uh, technical difficulties arise, we need to uh, pause temporarily to rectify the problem, and then continue the meeting. If you do not have technical issues, please let Sean or Pam know. Discussion may be suspended while the technical issues are addressed, and the minutes will note if a disconnect has occurred. Please use the raise hand function to ask a question or make a comment. I will see your raised hand and call you uh, upon to speak. After speaking, remember to remit yourself. Opportunity for public comment will be provided during the general, general public comment period and at other appropriate times during the meeting. Please be aware, um, please be aware the board will not respond to comments during general uh, public comment period. If you wish to make a comment, during a public comment period, you must join the meeting via the Zoom telephone, uh, teleconference, teleconferencing link, which I'm not going to read, but Pam, you can throw that up there. And so there's a link and it's listed on the meeting agenda, which can be found on the town website through the calendar listing for this meeting. Or you can go to the planning board webpage and click on the most recent agenda, which lists the Zoom link at the top of the page. Um, and again, this is kind of this stage is for those that might be viewing it on TV and want to make a call in to participate. So we will leave this up for you know a few seconds. Um, please indicate you wish to make a comment by clicking the raised hand button when uh, public comment is solicited. If you have joined the Zoom meeting using a telephone, please indicate you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on your telephone. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes and at the discretion of the planning board chair. If a, if a speaker does not comply with these guidelines or, ex, or exceeds their allotted time, their participation will be disconnected from the meeting. Moving on. The slide will now show the meeting agenda. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, with regard to the minutes, I would, because there's discussion about what the minutes should be, and, and we're looking at these minutes, and I'm wondering if we can just push the minutes to further down the line, because I feel like the board needs to discuss what these minutes should entail and um, some of the comments on, on the minutes that have been uh, produced by, by uh, uh, the planning department. So um, do I need an, a, a vote to do that? Because I think that we, did, we need to discuss Again, how we want to review our minutes, what they should entail, because this this is a bit of a, an, an issue, I think, right now, because it's been a huge burden to go kind of to work on the route that I see that we're taking in terms of the transcript route. And I know it's taking a lot of time on the planning department. And, and I know you know, it's time on my end that that um, to to read, you know, sixteen, you know, plus pages of minutes, and so I'd like for us as a planning board to review how we want to address this in the future, and if we can put that as new business and and put the minutes uh, for the two minutes that we have proposed, which are, what, the August 5th? Pam, help me out. August 5th and September 2nd. Yes, I had those, all right. So, um, so if we can just move to public comment period. And do you see any hands raised? I haven't really. I see no raised hands. Okay. So let us move in to the uh, site plan review. And I have to pull up uh, the introduction to that. Bear, bear with me. Okay, so it is uh, 640, uh, we can proceed with this. And in accordance with the provisions of MGL chapter 40A, this public hearing has been duly advertised and notice thereof, thereof has been posted and is being held for the purpose of providing the opportunity for interested citizens to be heard regarding SBR 2021-03 Jones Library, 43 Amity Street. And they request a site plan review approval to erect a temporary tent that is 12 foot by 40 foot in dimensions on the front lawn for the purpose of providing library services, including outside computer access services in the BG zoning district. They're on map 40, 14A parcel 36. Are there any board member disclosures? Very good. And uh, we have the applicant presenting uh, the project. That'd be uh, Sharon Cherry. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having us. Uh, I'm actually here just to answer questions uh, if you need me. But actually, George Hex, uh, our facility supervisor, he's going to uh, present the whole plan. Very good. Thank you, George. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is George Hicks. I am the facility supervisor uh, for the Jones. Uh, so yeah, we are looking to install a tent on the front lawn uh, so that we can provide both computer access services and potentially use it for other programming. Uh, one correction I want to make right off the bat, uh, the 
tent is listed as a 12 foot by 40 foot. We are looking to bump that out to a 14 foot by 40 foot. So we are going two feet wider uh, than what the original paperwork says. Um, the tent itself is a frame tent versus a pole tent. Uh, the tent was specified out uh, in discussions with both fire department and with uh, the Amherst town uh, facilities manager. Um, yeah, let me, Jeremiah LaPlante. Um, and this company that we're looking to purchase it from is a company that uh, somebody else in town had already purchased a tent from. So the tent itself, both sides would be closed, but the short ends would be open, both sides for proper airflow, and so that there would be an, in, an egress and a way out of the tent. Um, a tent of that size will allow us to have 10 workstations for the public and a place for a staff member and still be able to maintain social distancing. That was one of the biggest issues was trying to figure out how we could see as many people as possible, yet still have them be six feet apart. Um, unlike the restaurants and other businesses that are working outside, we kind of have different sets of limitations, so we have to go with those. Um, by having the tent of that size, it's gonna be right up against the front um, garden area, and the plan is to use barrels on the Amity Street side as far as weighting it down. Being a frame tent, it doesn't really need that, but we're gonna have that in place anyways, just to be have, have an extra measure of safety. So putting the tent in that area, we'll put it right up against the front entrance sidewalk on one end. The other end will go most of the way to where the bike racks are. It's really the only spot on the library property that is flat enough and large enough to handle this. Uh, we considered other options like maybe putting it in the driveway, but we didn't want to do that because we have deliveries and we also don't want to eliminate any handicapped parking spaces downtown. So this is really the only spot we would be able to do this. Um, it will involve temporary removal of the Jones Library lawn sign. Um, the sign is not an original sign to the building anyway, so there's no concern about uh, historic preservation restriction violating that. And it's also a good opportunity when we take it down, it really needs to be restored anyway. So it will involve that. Um, we've also looked into what the electrical plan will need to be, and our electrician has reviewed that over the phone with the town electrical inspector. Um, so if we go forward with that, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, what else? What else? I don't think I'm forgetting anything, but uh, I'm happy to answer any questions anybody may have about the tent. We are looking, this is only a temporary measure. Once it gets too cold uh, to do this outside, the tent will have to come down. Right now, we're just trying to give as many services as we can during this time period. I mean, we don't know how long this is all going to last, but we want to be able to have this now and do it as long as we can. Thank you, George. Uh, we can provide the site visit report at this time. I know that Janet and Tom and Andrew and Johanna were there. Um, does anyone want to, and I myself, um, does anyone want to speak to that? I can, if you want. Okay. So there wasn't that much to um, really observe. It was, we looked at the front lawn of the library to the right of the door as you're facing it. And that was a flat spot. Um, it was, we, you know, we looked at the site and what pictured what was five feet from the, the sidewalk. Um, it was clear the tent would wind up in that kind of falling apart sign, but we knew that was going to be removed. We heard that was going to re be removed. And I don't know if there's that much more to add. There wasn't, we, there wasn't a, like a formal presentation, but we could see, I thought the dimension was going to be 14 feet. I, I didn't, I didn't, I thought it, and then it would be 40 feet long. 
Um, we were told that the openings were going to be on both sides for airflow and that um, the flaps on the each, um, the long sides were, were going to be, um, uh, you know, white plastic. And so, and then it was temporary just for the, for the, um, whatever we consider warm in New England. Am I missing something? Is there any other detail? Well, I was wondering, and you actually brought this up. Uh, why are, why is the planning board reviewing this, uh, Chris? That was my question. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, the planning board is being asked to review this because it's, um, it's a structure that's being placed on the Jones library property. That's bigger than 200 square feet. Um, okay. and this brings up the point of the little blue tent that is um, also on the property and the little blue tent is smaller than uh, 200 square feet. So it doesn't need um, a building permit. And this tent, this one that's currently being proposed does need a building permit and it is being placed on the property and so it needs site plan review. Um, in, in certain instances, the building commissioner has waived site plan review for tents on some of the uh, school properties, although that's usually when they are right butting up against existing walkways. And if um, there's any need to add some sort of path to get to the tent, then um, he, he brings it to the planning board. I think the other issue is that this is a very um, visible site. So um, he wanted to give the opportunity to the public to see this pro project and um, be able to comment on it if they wanted to. Um, can may you I say one more thing? Mm -hmm. Yes. So the other thing is that the building commissioner and um, others are looking at a material to lay down on the ground because um, knowing that the lawn is a little bumpy, they're looking at some kind of material like plastic sheeting or something that's rigid that um, would allow wheelchairs to uh, traverse over it um, so that someone could get from the walkway that goes up to the little side door uh, into the tent. Because I understand from hearing from Mr. Hicks previously that uh, the tent will be one way in, one way out. So you need a way to get in and a way to get out. And the two ways to enter and exit, if they are on grass, will have some sort of um, rigid covering. And, and you may wanna ask Mr. Hicks about whether that rigid covering would go through the tent or not. Um, so that's, that's all I have to say right now. Thank you. Um, George, do you have comment to that? Uh, as far as the flooring flooring goes, um, I really can't comment too much on that because you know just about as much as I do. I had discussed it preliminarily with Jeremiah and I raised the concern that flooring was never used in any of the tents for, you know, on the town common for the fairs or farmer's market or anything like that. And I was just questioning whether or not it was necessary and whether or not it was an expense that we had to go through uh, in order to do this on a temporary basis. So I can't speak to like if it's supposed to cover the entire base of the tent or if it's just supposed to be a walkway or, or what. Okay. Yeah, may I follow up? Yes, Chris. So you could say that that will be covered during the uh, building commissioner's review when he reviews this for uh, granting a building permit, if that's suitable for you. That sounds reasonable. Um, so are there any questions from the board? I see none and public comments. Um, Jack, uh, there are some hands, hands up. up, Jack, Doug, oh, I'm sorry. Maria, oh, sorry. Andrew. I was looking at uh, the wrong screen. <laughs> Apologize. Uh, Andrew. Thanks. Um, and thanks for the presentation, George. One thing, um, actually, Janet, you mentioned the, 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 the panels. And I wasn't sure actually whether that was the case or not. So they're going to be opaque panels. 
the side panels will not be opaque. They'll be they'll be white. Um, so the long so the long pan the long ends the forty foot lengths will be will be solid. The okay. smaller ends will just be completely open. Okay. All right. So it's 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 you will not be able to see through. The Correct. Line. Okay. Correct. All right. Um, and then you mentioned the barrels. There's no need for guy wires or anything like that with this installation. Correct. All right. And then um, I guess the only other thing I had was just, I know you'd mentioned the computer equipment coming in overnight. Is there anything that's going to stay in the tent overnight or will it be a completely stripped? All of the, yeah, all of the computer equipment, the tables, the chairs, they will all be coming into the building when the tent is not in use. Um, the only thing that'll be out there is, you know, the electrical, it's going to be on a post, so, uh, but the electrical will be turned off. Okay, so yeah, you'll still run a new circuit to have like a permanent electric installation to, to tap. Is correct. That, okay. Correct. Um, thanks. That, those are my questions. Very good. And uh, Doug? Uh, two questions. Uh, first, do you have any management plan for whether, how you will address the probable interest of the homeless in taking shelter in this tent? Um. I don't know if Sharon wants to add anything to this, but we did discuss with the police chief that we were looking into doing this. Um, it's something that we've asked them to do is step up their uh, patrols of the area. When we installed the small tent uh, that we use for the holds right now, the one that's uh, 10 by 15 or 10 by 20, uh, we asked them to step up the patrols just because we knew it would potentially create a, a, an attractive environment for that. Okay. Um, so we reviewed a couple of tents last time and ended up giving, approving those and saying they could, they could be in place for up to 18 months before the applicant needed to come back. Uh, would that time frame be adequate from your point of view or, or would you imagine this could possibly go longer? I really hope it doesn't have to go 18 months. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess my counter question to that would be, if we take it down during the winter months and put it back up in the spring, will that trigger having to re-review this or would that 18 month time period just carry on until the 18 months is over? Uh, the, the intent was the latter, that it can be up or down and up and down as much as you want to take it up and down over 18 months. But I really don't down, want to. <laughs> but, it, but it comes down at the end of 18 months, if not yeah. sooner. I um, would really and, like to think that 18 months would be sufficient. Do you agree, okay. Sharon? And, and during that time, you know, or, or after that time, you can come back and we'll talk about it again. Okay. That way you don't have to spend a lot of time with us and uh, you can do what you need to do. I like you all, but I appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, I see Janet. So what's the plan for like high winds or bad weather, you know, at night or on weekends? Will someone come and remove the tent or? Uh, the, the, the tent was, the tent was specified that it would be able to handle uh, harsh weather. I mm -hmm. mean, if we get something considerable, like, like a hurricane or something like that, uh, I would assume that we would take it down. But the tent should be able to handle, because uh, it's a commercial tent, it, it should be able to handle most of the typical weather we receive. When it does start snowing, uh, the tent will come down and it just won't go back up. Okay. Okay, so I don't see any other hands raised from the board. And then uh, from the public, I don't see any other hands as well. Um, 
Mr. Marshall okay. has re-raised his hand, Jack. Okay, Doug. Yeah, given that it seems like uh, we're out of comments, I was gonna move that we close the uh, hearing and that we approve the applicant application uh, for up to 18 months, at which point the applicant could return for another hearing. Chris? Second. Can I, can I ask a question first? Um, okay, wait a minute. Um, yes, Andrew. Yeah, sorry for the, the last minute interruption, but just um, Chris's comment relative to the making sure that it's a, a got appropriate handicapped accessibility, that's gonna be managed through uh, the building commissioner, is that right? That's not something we need to worry about as part of this approval? Great, okay, Chris. that was my only question. Okay. And Chris, did you have anything to add to the, the uh, in terms of the technicality of uh, Doug's motion? You're... You're muted, Chris. Sorry. People are cooking here and I wanted to keep the noise down for you. Um, anyway, um, so the 18 months, um, when uh, the applicant reappears after 18 months, that would be at a public meeting and there wouldn't be um, a hearing. Is that Mr. Marshall's intention? That it would be a public meeting? Um, because a public hearing entails legal ads and notification of abutters. Uh, yes, um, that's fine. I will amend my motion to replace the word hearing with meet meeting with hearing or hearing with meeting. And may I suggest two other additions? Um, one being um, to approve the conditions as um, discussed and also to say that this meets any relevant uh, criteria of section 11.24 of the bylaw. Sounds good. Um, so uh, Doug has uh, made a motion and- I'll second. Think, okay, again, a second. And so we can do a roll call. Oh, excuse me, discussion. Um, Pam, Johanna, oh wait, Johanna disappeared. Oh, Johanna's being listed as Tom Long on my screen. Let me see if I can fix that. No, yeah, I mean, it's probably on Pam's end. She should be able to do it too. I got it, sorry. And all apologies for being late. I had it on my calendar for 7 p.m. and I'm really sorry. It used to be 7 p.m. <laughs> hence, hence my problem. <laughs> anyway, again, all apologies. <laughs> Um, very good. Um, and so who, who seconded? Janet. Did. Janet did. Yes. Thank you. And okay. So, all right. So I think we can take this to vote with not seeing other, any other hands. Correct, Pam? I do Chris? not see any hands. Okay, so we can do a roll call. Uh, Tom? Uh, approved, yes. Andrew? Approved. Janet? Yes. And Doug? Aye. And Maria? Yes. And Johanna, I'm not, I'm not sure where you stand on this, but... I'm gonna abstain because I wasn't okay, here. Okay, very good. Uh, so I approve. So that's uh, six, approve, one, abstain. And thank you very much. Thank you. Sharon and George, appreciate all you do and thank hope you. this works out for you. Mm -hmm. nice. We do too, uh, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. And okay, so I'm going to the agenda here. All right.
So election of officers and planning board reorganization. So um, I know at this time we have three new you know, board members. Uh, we had Christine uh, Gray Mullen um, step down. I was the vice chair and um, Maria was the clerk. And um, Hmm, what else there? But, um, and then also we had, we had uh, Dave Levenstein, you know, step down and then um, and Mike Burt Whistle was a former member, but again, highly qualified, but we got three highly qualified uh, new members. And, you know, I personally thrilled to have, you know, Tom and Andrew and Johanna uh, on the board um and so so we need to reorganize so we haven't had a vote because of the way things have have lagged so and i have spoken to some of you you know with regard to that um so um how chris how how, how should this unfold um, I unmuted, yeah. So one of you needs to, um, or one or more of you need to um, nominate someone for chair, and then you have a second and then a vote, and then one or more needs to nominate someone or others for vice chair, and then you have a second and a vote, and then you nominate someone for a clerk, and then you have a okay. second and a vote. So someone needs to make that nomination. Nominate okay, Jack so for, I nominate Jack for chair. Oh, okay. And is there a second? Uh, Maria. Second. Okay, so let's let's uh, take that to vote. And again, you know, there 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 is <laughs> a little bit complicated. And I, I have spoken, you know, with with Doug. You know, a couple of meetings, you know, passed. I'm willing to to take this on. I was a little bit intimidated, and it really was because Christine Gray Mullen was doing such an amazing job that I thought I could never, um, and I will not be able to do <laughs> as good a job as what she has been doing. And but I I realized maybe it doesn't take quite the 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 level of effort that she was doing. And, and, and so I'm, 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 I'm good with uh, being in this position. So um, we can do any, any discussion. Okay, so we can do um, a vote. Uh, Tom? Uh, I approve, I agree. Thank you. Uh, Andrew? Approve. Janet? Approve. Thank you, Doug. Aye. And <laughs> Johanna. Aye. And Maria. Approve. Right. All right. So uh, we also have the vice chair and the clerk to fill. The vice chair. Um, we need to nominate someone, Maria. Nominate Doug Marshall. Okay. Do we have a second for that? I'll second that. All right, Tom, thank you. Any discussion? I think, I think Doug is, uh, you know, fantastic. And he's, he's, he, he's been, <laughs> he's been uh, with us. Has it been a, a year yet, Doug? No. Okay. But anyway, um, if there's no other further comment, um, we can do a vote for that. And uh, I will ask uh, Tom. Aye. And Andrew. Approve. And Janet. And I. And Doug. Aye. And <laughs> Joanna. Aye. Maria. Yes, approve. And myself, uh, yes. 
And we also had the position of clerk, which uh, Maria has been serving. And I understand that uh, she would be willing to continue in that position, uh, but we would need someone to move uh, for that. So, Doug? Sure, I'm happy to nominate Maria as clerk. And can we have a, a second on that? I'll second. Janet okay. Scott. All right, I think it, I heard Janet. Yeah. Okay. And any discussion? Okay, so let's do uh, a roll call. Tom? Aye. Andrew? Approve. Janet? Yes. Doug? Aye. Johanna? Aye. And Maria? Yes. Very good. And okay. Mr. Jemsek? Oh, I approve. Yes. And, and and we also have some spots on our committees. Uh, Chris, can you help me out here? I, is this under this spot or? Chris, Chris, are you frozen? Chris. Yeah, someone's use, someone's using the microwave here. <laughs> <laughs> My computer freezes when they use the microwave. Um, That's true. So I wanted to say that the um, the most crucial position to nominate someone for is the um, C, uh, CPAC, Community Preservation um, Committee, Community Preservation Act Committee. And they yeah. meet on Thursday evenings at 6 p.m., uh, during their busy season, but the rest of the year they don't really meet. And um, planning board rep is a voting member and nominated by the planning board to represent planning board and report to planning board. And um, then appointed by the town manager. So the CPAC is about to start meeting. In fact, I think they might have met once already. And the town manager is very eager to appoint the planning board chair. So he's asked me to um, encourage you to nominate your representative at this meeting tonight. Okay. So if we kind of flip to, you know, section, if you have the agenda, um, section 10 there, um, we have the vacancies, but I think we can let things kind of, um, you know, let, let the new members kind of get acclimated you know, learn a little bit more about these other different positions. But um, I will, you know, suggest we just do the Community Pre Preservation Act committee, uh, um, you know, voting today because of the, you know, more urgency as, as uh, Chris Brestrup has mentioned. So, um, you know, this one looks like to be a fall intensive sort of uh, uh, effort on the board member with, with weekly meetings through a period of months. Is that, is that correct, Chris? I think they do meet just about weekly um, for the rest of September and October. Um, and then once okay. they've made their um, recommendation to town council, then they um, can stop meeting unless they have to make a presentation to town council. Okay, so you know, there's, so there's a lot going on this fall, um, and it, it probably would ease uh, going into the, the the spring summer, and and I am, you know, open to um, any anyone that that wants to take this on. It's a very critical position, you know, obviously within within the town, uh, a lot of funding that that goes through this committee. Uh, does great things and uh, Chris do you have your hand up yeah would anyone like a, an explanation of what CPAC is I don't know if everybody I, I would no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a state law although I know a little bit but I, I'd love to hear it from you so the uh, state law is the Community Preservation Act and it was passed back in the early 2000s like before 2003 and it allows cities and towns to set aside 
part of their um, taxes for certain uses. And those uses are historic preservation, affordable housing, open space, and recreation. And there are various um, requirements for how much of a percentage of the amount of money you need to set aside for each of those, um, those areas. Um, usually Amherst has somewhere in excess of a million dollars a year to allocate for these various uses. And the CPAC, um, the Community Preservation Act Committee, hears proposals by various groups in town and they can be um, private groups, they can be public entities, they can be historical commission or leisure services. Um, sometimes things come from the conservation department. Um, they can be things like, you know, purchase of property to, um, to add to our open space. They can be things like um, fixing the steeple on the Jewish Community Center, um, where that beautiful acorn is at Southeast Street. Um, so various things like that. Some of the money's been used to fix the roof on Town Hall because it's a historic building. So um, CPAC has a lot, of, um, a lot of power because they have that amount of money and then they can um, you know, dole it out as they see fit. The town council needs to uh, approve the CPAC recommendations, but I would say generally speaking, town council usually approves CPAC recommendations. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. So um, Chris, I have a question. Who are the other members on that committee? I don't have that information right at hand. Uh, if someone wanted to check the internet, um, check the town website and yeah. go to I have it. I have it. I have it. Okay. Tom? You want to know? Yes. It's um, Sarah Marshall is the vice chair. Um, Fletcher Clark. Uh, Sarah Isinger, Robin Fordham, Sam McLeod, um, Diana Stein, and David Williams. And they have various associations. Many of them are at large. At large. So, so they're not affiliated with other town boards or committee type representative as, as if the, the planning board representative is some are some uh, Fletcher Clark is from the Conservation Commission. Robin okay. Fordham is from Historical Commission, and David Williams is from Housing Authority. But um, three of them are at large, and the planning board slot is open. Great, thank you, Tom. So, uh, Janet, um, I I I haven't been part of this process before, so I was wondering: do people just say I'm interested? Um, and talk about it a little bit or just, or are the people nominated? It, it, I mean, I just, I'm kind of curious, like who's interested in things like that. So I've never gone through this before. Yeah, I mean, I, um, I, I think it's kind of, I think it's kind of open. So uh, if you, if, are you interested, Janet? I love that committee, but not particularly. So I was just wondering if like yeah. two other people were interested in you could sort of talk that through. It's a little awkward, I suppose. Yeah, and I, I know, also know that you're also involved with the zoning subcommittee, although it's not active right now. So it's an easy committee to be on right now. Yeah, so, and then, um, all right, thank you, Janet and Doug. Uh, I was just gonna say, uh, uh, my wife is the Sarah Marshall who's on that committee. So uh, from a household management point of view, I'm going to remove myself from consideration <laughs> for that. Uh, I will also say she's the representative from LSSE. Okay. I didn't make the connection there. So uh, Maria? I think in the past, um, people just, you know, if you're interested, just say, I volunteer for it. Like when we had an opening in the Ag Commission, I remember Pari just spoke up, you know, so yeah, yeah. anyone who's interested, just speak up. I think that's a good time because I, I don't think anyone has been, um, um, I mean, I try to reach out to all of you, but I, I don't know that I've, you know, we haven't released, um, to me, I, I'm not recommending anyone because I haven't really got a sense of what people are feeling. So if anyone wants to volunteer, 
again, it, it is a time intensive effort, especially in the fall. Um, I know a lot of you have families. Um, I know, I know I can't do it personally. Um, but it's a very important thing for the town. Um, so, um, Doug? Oh, your hand. Okay. Uh, Andrew. Yeah, I, excuse me. I was just going to say, uh, just Chris, thanks for explaining a little bit more about the busy season. That's that's something that was kind of throwing me for a whack of what the overall time commitment is. Does, does anybody, Doug, maybe you know, um, based on when your wife is available on Thursdays, but how long do those <laughs> meetings typically run? Uh, <clears throat> my impression is that they run from sort of 6.30 until 8. And um, they're not, she, she told me that there's a couple of upcoming weeks when they're not gonna be meeting. Um, they've, they've got the RFP out at the moment. They're waiting for submissions to come in. So, um, I don't think they're meeting next week, but they're hoping to get started kind of the week after. Um, and it, it, it is, and it does seem to be mostly the the bump, the months of of uh, September, October, and early November, and then it's basically done for the year. So, you know, it's 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 an easy one if you can make the time during this period, and then you've got nothing really to to do the rest of the year. Oh, right. So then the other question I had is, is this something that we would typically do? Um, would we look to reappoint this on an annual basis? Is that the, the typical or does a, per, does a position stay filled until that representative opts out or, or terms off the board? The website says uh, three-year appointments. Okay. That's what I, all right. Okay, I was so I was just going to say I have an I have an interest. The time commitment was my largest concern. Um, I do travel for work whenever that happens again, um, but um, just we'll put it out there that I, I do have an interest. I might not be able to make all the meetings. That would be my caveat. Okay, so um, I suggest someone. And I'll move that uh, Andrew is well, would be Janet, our representative. I'm sorry to, to speak. I don't speak out of order here, but Janet, were you also were you um, indicating interest in actually serving? No, on it? no, I wasn't. Oh. But I was just wondering about how we how the planning board decides who goes on. But I'm happy to um, move nominate you for the um, CPAC, Andrew. Great. Uh, is there a second? I'll second. This is Johanna. All right, Johanna. All right. Uh, any discussion? I, I was just going to add that, again, should my travel requirements or work requirements, like, I assume that we would have some sort of, you know, backup member who would fill in on those situations, either on like a week by, whether that's a week by week or whether that's like a next year, we reevaluate. But I just, I want to be, I want to just be clear that you know, I, I will juggle my time commitments as best as possible, but. And then I wanted to, first of all, Andrew, thank you just like for your candor. I, I'm totally interested in this position. Um, I, it, it is also right now the time commitment this fall. I, I already feel overcommitted and I don't think I could, I can't do it this year, but I like the idea of revisiting this a year from now um, and just seeing, you know, how it's working. Cause even though the terms are three years, you know, it's not like I can imagine there's a learning curve. And so there's value in actually going through the RFP process numerous times and developing leadership internally in the committee. Um, but I would all, you know, I think the dust will have settled a little bit a year from now and I would be open to revisiting it at that point too. So Andrew, you would not be like, you know, committed to <laughs> multiple years here. So it sounds like they're, they're uh, if you can, you know, see it through this fall, it doesn't sound like it's a position that can be where we can have a backup necessarily because of the, the type of information that flows through it. But um, 
Um, are are you are you good with personally stepping up and and uh, accepting that nomination? Yeah, I I think you know for this calendar year, feel comfortable about that. I I I would like the opportunity for us to revisit this next year, depending on how schedules look. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, any other comments? Um, not, no, I have a quick comment that I, um, I think you're a great fit for this, Andrew, so um, with your experience, so I'm excited that you're uh, in that role. Great. Um, good, okay, so um, I think we're good to take uh, a roll call on this, Chris. Yep. Um, okay. So, uh, Tom? Aye. All right. Uh, Andrew? Aye. And Janet? Aye. Doug? Aye. Johanna? Aye. And Maria? Yep. And myself uh, is an aye. So, that's seven zero. And at this point, um, again, the, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, I'm on that. We will need an alternate, but uh, I don't know that we need to go into that, but um, we could. The alternate has sometimes been a planning department person. Um, the alternate, um, I'm the commissioner right now. Well, I guess I would, I guess, do I need to be re-upped for, for the position I have, Chris? I don't know when the last time that was voted. But that was voted in the spring. So you're freshly um, okay. in as the planning board rep and okay. as Amherst's rep. I could even tell you, I mean, I can't tell you tonight, but I could tell you the exact meeting yeah. that happened. So, you know, what? Uh, and then this summer I was asked to be on the executive committee on the Pioneer Valley Commission, which again was like giving me uh, some pause with regard to taking on more responsibilities, but that has been fine. There, there are monthly, uh, you know, meetings associated, associated with the uh, executive committee on that. I'm very interested in the, in the regional planning aspects that um, it provides, you know, Amherst with regard to, you know, Western Mass because I think we need to look beyond just, you know, what we're doing here. So I'm very intrigued by that and uh, would like to continue with that. But uh, the alternate is in the in the chance I can't, I guess the, the regular commissioners are meeting on a quarterly basis. Um, and there's not a meeting that's coming up that's imminent, um, is my understanding. Um, and then the Agricultural uh, Commission, boy, um, might as well discuss this as well. Right now, we have we have a light uh, you know, agenda tonight. So, uh, Chris, can you tell us something about that? Um, the Agricultural Commission is made up um, of farmers and people who are interested in farming. I think Ryan Carb is currently the chairperson. He is the um, operator of Many Hands Farm on Pelham Road. Um, and he's been active in farming, you know, for a number of years. He, he trains um, young farmers in, in the ways of farming and, you know, tries to get them started. Um, so other farmers in town have been members of the Agricultural Commission from time to time, but others have as well. I think Rebecca Frick, Fricka was um, a member of the Ag Commission for a long time. Um, Ag Commission tends to, for various reasons, and it could have to do with farmers' schedules, um, have a hard time meeting. It has a hard time reaching a quorum. So often, you know, the representative of the Ag, or the representative to the AgCom will come and report to the planning board that, oh, the AgCom hasn't met in a long time. Um, anyway, it's, I don't think it's a burdensome, um, Excuse me, I have a dog right next to me. I'm trying to shoo the dog away. <laughs> um, so it's not a burdensome responsibility, um, but it may actually 
uh, well, I, I hope that it will be fulfilling for whoever takes the role. And, and you may find out more about farming in um, Amherst. And, and that's required that a planning board uh, representative is on that commission? Yes, but it's a non-voting um, rep. It's a liaison, so it's not actually a member. Okay. It's liaison. a person who goes to the meetings and listens to what they say and then reports to the planning board. Because we, uh, we used to have, you know, many, we had, used to have like a two or three additional um, liaison kind of appointments that have dropped off some of them and what the, the TAC, Transportation Advisory Committee, mm -hmm. is no longer th uh, there and, and a couple other. So, um, and There's then the Design Review Board, again, um, you want me to talk about that? We have time, yes. So the Design Review Board has five members. There's a representative from the Historical Commission and a representative from the, um, from the Planning Board. Um, the members are appointed by the um, plant town manager, but they are nominated by their um, committee. Um, they're required to have an, an architect. They're required to have a downtown business person and I forget what the other thing is, but there, there are three things that are um, required, three people who are required. Maybe the th third one is the planning board rep. Anyway, um, they meet as needed. They tend to meet on either Tuesday or a Monday or Tuesday night, um, usually for an hour and a half or two hours. And they review a lot of different things. Um, primarily in the past, they've reviewed signs and um, things are, that are changes, vis visual changes in the downtown area. Their area of jurisdiction is the downtown business general district and the um, surrounding limited business district. So it's really, you know, from a little bit north of Triangle Street to somewhere down around the town common and then going east to west, it's probably over to South Prospect Street and then over to um, Probably, I don't even know if it goes as far as Churchill, but it's, you know, it's contained in the downtown. But then they also review any project of the uh, town. So um, we just went to them last week, the town planning department had to go to them to have uh, wayfinding signs reviewed. We're planning a, a series of wayfinding signs in the uh, area around the downtown. So anything that the town does, even if we make a, like a new shed in the, D DPW um, landfill. We're supposed to go to the design review board and get it reviewed, which is good because it makes things that the town does um, have to step up to the same standards as we expect others. Um, and the other thing is anything within 150 feet of the town common is reviewed by the design review board. So that includes even paint colors. So when um, when the rectory building that's next to the Grace Church was painted a number of years ago, they had to go to the design review board to get their paint colors approved, as did Hastings. Um, so those kinds of things. So people who are interested in design um, might be might like that. And there is at least one architect on the design review board now, um, but I'm sure they would welcome others. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, personally, you know, someone like you know. I, again, haven't had any discussions, but Tom seems like <laughs> they are our best candidate, but I don't want to push anyone uh, toward that. And, you know, we can let it, we can let it, you know, slide to the next, you know, meeting and let it think about it. But Tom, I don't know if you, Andrew has his, okay, well, Got a lot of hands, Jack. A lot of, okay. <laughs> All right, Tom. Um, um, so I, I'm willing to serve on that committee. That would okay. Be one that I would be interested in. Um, everything from wayfinding to the architecture downtown. Super. I'm super interested. So I'd be willing to serve on that. And um, I know a couple of the people on the committee now. So if anyone's interested, I have the list up here. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, uh, Andrew? Yeah, so actually the first thing I was going to say was for the Ag Commission, just look at our Zoom backgrounds. I mean, Doug, looks like you're calling for the Ag Commission, right? 
Um, <laughs> and then I, I think Tom makes sense too, but, uh, but it occurs to me, like I know more about Tom and Johanna because we've gone through the interview process together. I don't really know the backgrounds of, you know, the other four of you. And so, you know, it certainly would make sense given Tom's background as an architect and, and his interest, but I don't know if we have other architects or, you know, if there are other folks who feel like they're, they're qualified or interested. Um, absent anybody, I would absolutely support Tom though. Okay, so that brings to mind where we had a brief introduction for Tom and Andrew that were new to the board and maybe, oh my gosh, uh, should we have like, you know, a brief introduction again with, with Johanna coming on board so we know who each other are um, and just go through the whole board. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I kind of, that was a oversight on my board, but, or in my thought, <laughs> my bad, but um, I can start it off. Um, and then we just go, you know, wrap around of, of all the members now. So um, I'm an environmental consultant. I'm a hydrogeologist. Um, I've been a consultant for, you know, 30 years. Um, got a doctorate from MIT in Woods Hole Oceanographic. Uh, have served on professional boards, uh, some local boards and, and that. And, um, um, and, and again, I, I think I, I got landed on the planning board because I interviewed for a committee, a committee, uh, back, <laughs> there were a lot of people volunteering and, 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 uh, the, the temporary, um, uh, town manager said there, would you consider the planning board? So that's how I'm on the planning board right now, uh, basically. But I, I feel like, you know, it's a good thing to, to give back to the community. And that's, that's where I'm at right now. Um, you know, I have a couple of kids that have gone through the, 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 the school system, lived here 20 years. Um, and so I think that's, you know, basically, you know, uh, my background um and it will go in and uh with regard to experience on the board that would be uh, maria next uh let's see that's great i learned some new stuff about you jack um, <laughs> <laughs> let's see i'm an architect uh, i've been working since uh 1999 um, various places started out in Charlottesville, Virginia and moved here. <clears throat> I uh, was an adjunct at UMass and that's how I connected with Steve Schreiber, who was actually the person who brought me onto the planning board um, back when he was chair. Um, yeah, I'm just a local architect. I've been focusing on uh, off-grid and net zero sustainable homes um, with a sort of modern twist um, on the New England sort of traditional um, homes and uh, oh, actually the planning board is the first sort of volunteer committee I've been on. I haven't done any other stuff locally. So it's been a fun experience, very eye-opening. I sort of staggered, uh, straddled the town meeting and town council. So I kind of saw both worlds. And um, so I am yeah, really excited for this new group to do uh, good work moving forward. Thank you, Maria. Uh, Janet? So um, it's funny to say this because I always learn about people's backgrounds even after working with them for a while. Um, I went, I'm a graduate of Antioch College and Harvard Law School. Um, I did litigation mostly for about 10 years. Um, I worked at Conservation Law Foundation um, and then wound up my um, legal career at Cultural Survival, which works with different um, sort of groups of anthropologists and different um, indigenous peoples around the world. And I had some projects with them. Um, I've done a little bit of family law, business law. Um, I was, I've been, I've mediated for a couple of years, um, like four or five years. Um, when I lived in Somerville, I was on the Conservation Commission. And then when I came to Amherst, I did everything from coaching basketball teams to um, being active on neighborhood issues. I was a town meeting member. I've been basically home with my kids for 20 years and then they grew up. So now I'm on the planning board. Thank you. And also just a little fact is I grew up in Stony Brook. So I grew up in a college town that did the opposite, the opposite of Amherst, which basically protected nothing. And so 
pretty much every field and farm that I grew up in was filled up with something. And so Amherst is kind of the cure for that for me. <laughs> Thank you. And Doug? A little background? Yeah. Um, I've been on the planning board since I think last February. So it hasn't, hasn't been a year. Um, this is, that's my first, this is my first uh, town committee or volunteer position at all. Um, on my day job, I work at UMass in the campus planning group. Um, I've been with, uh, in that position for about 10 years. Uh, moved here to Amherst 10 years ago. Uh, I'm an architect by training. Uh, I spent 20 years in Boston in the several large uh, architectural firms uh, before coming here. Thank you. And then um, Tom, I know, I know Tom and Andrew gave a little spiel, but for the benefit of all of us, you can just give us a little bit again. Thank you. So, um, so uh, I'm trained as an architect, um, practice as an architect in Boston and New York. Um, also, uh, I've become a graphic designer, so I have a practice in that, and I teach uh, architecture and design in the five colleges uh, right now at Hampshire College. I've been there for about 15 years, and this is my first public uh, appointment, um, and I'm excited to participate and work with you all. Thank you. Andrew? Yeah, um, so I do um, market planning for Capital One Bank. I, I've been working with banks for the last 20 years to help them determine the, the optimal geographic real estate distribution of their networks. So um, getting out across the US, major metro areas, suburban areas, rural areas, just kind of looking at, at how people are, are kind of working through space and using space. Um, this is my first volunteer work that I've done with the town. I was a longtime volunteer for the UMass Alumni Association. I was the, on the board of directors and the president of the board for a while, and currently the president of the board for Amherst Youth Lacrosse and a coach uh, for them as well. Um, and I would just say I met Christine through that. She and I started the, the girls' programs in, in AYL. And then Doug, um, our daughters uh, connected in cross country. Um, so it's kind of nice putting some names to faces and so forth, but anyhow, um, very happy to be here. And um, I guess the other thing I say, I work from home. Uh, so I, when I'm not traveling, I am, uh, I'm in the, the bunker in the basement here, so. A basement office, I like Lovely. it. Lovely, <laughs> It sounds familiar. <laughs> uh, Johanna, please. Great. Um, so I grew up in Germany. I lived there until I was seven. Both my parents are German and then um, emigrated to the States when I was, I guess, yeah, seven years old in 1986 um, after the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. And I think that kind of got me pointed into the direction of environmental advocacy and organizing. And I've been walking that line ever since. Um, so that's what I do professionally. Right now I run the energy program for Environment America. Um, which is a kind of national federation of state-based groups. Our Massachusetts chapter is called Environment Massachusetts. Um, and we've lived in, my husband grew up in Leverett. Um, we moved back here after he finished his doctorate and he's now faculty at UMass in the School of Public Health. So um, uh, let's see, we have two school-age kids. My youngest Moritz is in second grade at Fort River and my eldest son is in fifth grade at Fort River. Um, and I've been, this is my first kind of official board capacity. I've worked on a couple of kind of political campaigns in Amherst, but this is my first kind of within town government appointment. Thank you. And then I have a monthly column in the Gazette. So if there are ever fun issues that we want to get the light of day, we can use that as a lever. <laughs> No, I, I, I definitely, you know, obviously I, I, I know you from, from some of that stuff. So I, I was thrilled to have you uh, come on board. So um, being an environmental 
consultant myself. So, um, so oh, Maria, yes. I forgot to mention I have kids. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Two oh, kids. Maria, how many? I, mean, I have a senior in high school and a freshman in high school, and they just started school today online, and I'm very excited about that. And yeah, I forgot to mention I have kids. <laughs> it, it, it seems like we all have kids, and then you know, but Janet and I have. Uh, more like empty nest scenarios, except we, I know I don't anymore because of COVID and, and online learning and things like that. It so, was empty until six months ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Andrew, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Just because my family would kill me if I didn't say it since this is, you know, public. I also have kids, uh, three of them. <laughs> High school, middle school, and elementary school. I think all of them have interacted, Jack, with your wife at Crocker. Um, True, yes. yes. And, and Maria. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, Challenging times like COVID, but uh, you, oh, yeah. know, you, you see all this testing going on, but not, you know, it's a little frustrating. And I hope everything works out because uh, we're limited limited budgets and, and things like that but it's happening i guess the maybe the first day was today oh yes i'm not yeah so some of us know that very well yes it yeah <laughs> it was a complicated morning it was right. a complicated morning <laughs> <laughs> and my my daughter uh is in the same grade as uh johanna's son at fort river so that's my youngest my oldest is wow. a middle schooler well, I think we're all in then and in, in making sure that Amherst is uh, doing our best. So, um, because we, we all have kids. So, kids, thank you so much. I'm, bedtime, so I'm relocating downstairs. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I appreciate everyone for that, for the short, you know, synopsis of everyone's background. And, you know, it's, 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 Again, uh, going Zoom versus, you know, in meeting uh, or in-person meetings and in the town hall, it, it's, it's good that we do this. So uh, welcome, you know, you know, Tom, Andrew, uh, Johanna. And uh, Doug, do you have a hand up? Yeah, I was just gonna say I had, I have a daughter. It sounds like she knows Andrew's daughter, so. <laughs> Uh, I'll find out about that when I finish this meeting. <laughs> um, and Andrew, you're perceptive because I, I actually was interested in the Ag, ag Commission. <laughs> and the background, was just, the background was not intentional. <laughs> subtle, subtle hints. Uh, good. Um, well, um, okay. Well, Perhaps we take care of the agricultural uh, commission. If someone wants to do a nomination there, um, Tom. Sure, I'll nominate Doug. Okay. The ag committee. Do we have a second? I'll second. Andrew. Okay. Um, any discussion? All right, um, let's roll call Tom. Hi. And Andrew? I changed my mind. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Janet? Yes. <laughs> uh, Doug? Uh, yeah, sure. Yes, all right, Maria? Yes. Joanna? Hi. And myself, yes. Okay, and, and then the other, I mean, the zoning subcommittee uh, is a little bit in a, uh, and we'll talk about that, but um, Maria and Janet are on that right now. I mean, uh, we could have more people on that, but it's a little bit in a state of flux with regard to the, uh, uh, the CRC um, and, and town council, but that's good. I think uh, with regard to you know the planning board re reorganization. Uh, I think we we did a lot uh, this evening. Uh, Chris, do you have any comment on that? I was wondering if you wanted to go back to DRB 
um, because Tom um, said that he was interested in serving on DRB. Oh, and then I Andrew oh, I thought we, said, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, I was wondering if we, if we did that or not. All right. I, I, I apologize. For Tom. Yeah. So I guess we got sidetracked. Okay, that's right. We, I, I went to where we wanted to talk about yeah. our backgrounds and things like that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Let's circle back. I do apologize. Uh, I personally would would nominate you know Tom um, for the design review board uh, uh, liaison or representative. Not sure what the title would be, but um, and Doug second and uh, Andrew. Yet you, you you had your hand up, but okay. All right. Any discussion on Tom's nomination? I was only going to ask whether Maria is another architect, whether you had interest. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I know. Yeah. I mean, she's uh, with the design group. Yeah. Excuse me, with the, with the uh, zoning subcommittee. Um, I know she has her, your hands full, although there's been a hiatus hiatus. Uh, so we can do a roll call. I believe there's no other discussion. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Tom? Yes. Andrew? Approve. Janet? Yes. Doug? Aye. Maria? Yes. Joanna? Aye. And I am also a yes. Wow, I, so I didn't think we'd get through all this, but uh, the, the, that's great. Uh, thank you all. And so I'm flipping back uh, to old business. And we have the Amherst Hill subdivision, which uh, I do have to thank uh, Janet for bringing this up in terms of like, oh yeah, where are they at? And so we had some interesting emails and uh, Chris can report on that. So just to let the other new members know what's going on, um, the Amherst Hill subdivision has been a subdivision that's un been under construction and un under development since the early 90s. Um, and it's um, it's been kind of a rocky road for a number of reasons. We had the um, downturn in the economy in 2008, and then the main person who was developing the subdivision, um, Doug Cole, who was very well known and well liked in the area, passed away. And so his business, um, Tofino Associates and Cole Construction was um, kind of taken over by, um, you know, people who initially kind of struggled with all of this. And so, you know, they've pulled out of their difficulties, but now they're faced with the fact that the much of the roadway was built a number of years ago. And um, over time, it's deteriorated. And the town has had a policy that um, the roadways that are going to be accepted by the town um, need not have their top course put on um, prior to most of the houses being built. And the reason for that is that we don't want heavy equipment traveling over the top course for a roadway that the town is going to be um, taking. And uh, Amherst Hills roadways are roadways that the town will be taking. The board knows that there are other subdivisions in town that have roadways that are going to remain private, um, which doesn't diminish the planning board's interest in those roads, but it's um, not as serious as it is for Amherst Hills. So anyway, last fall, the fall of 2019, um, residents of the Amherst Hills subdivision came to the town. They came to the town manager, they came to the uh, town engineer, they came to the planning board um, pleading with the town to try to get their roadway complete because the town um, DPW was threatening not to um, plow the road last winter. And um, so the planning board stepped in and the planning board, um, I would say, reluctantly stepped in and the planning board um, issued a, a letter to the building commissioner asking that um, certain lots in the subdivision, which had been released previously, um, be more or less held and not have their um, building, not have building permits issued on them until um, some action was taken on the roadway. Um, so anyway, we're sort of in a, I would 
how could I characterize this hiatus or <laughs> a waiting period? Um, last winter, um, Tofino, who is the developer, went to the Conservation Commission requesting permission to build houses on seven lots. And the Conservation Commission wasn't willing to grant them permission to do that because um, they became aware that there was a potential vernal pool in the vicinity of these seven lots. So um, the Conservation Commission wasn't willing to make any kind of uh, decision about this because it was winter. And they said, well, we need to wait till spring to see exactly where the wetland is, where the um, vernal pool is, et cetera. Well, along came last, last spring and they did make some progress. They, they went out and visited the site and they, they think they know where um, physically where the vernal pool is and where the wetland edges are. But they asked Tofino to bring more information back to them. And Tofino has been, um, they've missed a couple of meetings. They haven't shown up a couple of times. So anyway, um, to bring the story to a close, um, the Conservation Commission is expecting Tofino to come to their meeting next Wednesday to try to uh, work this out. I think the Conservation Commission would like to be able to reach um, some sort of a, an agreement with Tofino to allow construction on some of those lots um, and not allow construction on others of the lots. And the way this relates to what the planning board is facing is that um, Tofino apparently doesn't have a lot of money to fix the roadway. And in order to get enough money to fix the roadway, they, they say that they need to um, be able to sell these lots. So we're sort of caught in a little bit of a, I don't know, difficult situation. We're waiting for the CONCOM to act to see if the lots can be built on. Um, meanwhile, the um, it's, it is a very long story. <laughs> meanwhile, the um, <laughs> Tofino can't sell the lots on which the planning board has placed this hold because the building commissioner won't grant a release. Meanwhile, there's a lawsuit um, by Tofino against the residents of Amherst Hills and I don't really understand that lawsuit at all, but that's kind of keeping people from being able to sell their houses, which is really unfortunate. So it's a little bit of a mess. Um, we have a cost estimate from uh, our town engineer based on mass highway prices, which everybody knows are very high. The cost estimate is about $930,000 to finish the roadway. I think everybody feels that the actual price if it were, if the work were done by a private contractor, it would be more in the vicinity of, you know, six or 700,000. Um, but anyway, the planning board has been watching this case because they've been trying to figure out if they should um, take their, their uh, request to the building commissioner off and allow the lots to be released or, you know, what, what should the planning board do? Um, what I think the planning board should do is just wait and see, wait and see what happens with the Conservation Commission, wait and see if Tofino actually does any work on the road. We have a punch list for the roads. We know what work needs to be done. And let's see, um, I did email Michael Pill, who represents Tofino, and he said Tofino is talking to contractors about scheduling work to finish the road. As we all know, the um, time for working on roadways is Coming to a close probably sometime late October, early November, but um, we'll see how far they can get. They did do enough work on the roadway last winter to allow the roadway to be plowed. So that was, that was a good thing. Um, so they made that progress. And um, the other thing I can report is that I reached out to the town engineer about this, and he said he hasn't heard from Tofino in a couple of months. So that is what I know about this case right now. But if we want to know more, we can um, tune into the Conservation Commission meeting next week and find out what, what they're gonna do about these seven lots. So I, you know, I could add some comment there, but uh, Janet has a, a hand up and maybe, maybe she'll speak to what I will say. Um, Chris, I just have a question. So did the Conservation Commission ask for like a wetlands delineation and a vernal pool delineation? I mean, I assume they would hire someone to do that. Is that what they were, and has that been done? 
Conservation Commission has asked for a lot of information. Um, I didn't get a, a complete list of what they asked for, but they did ask for um, enough information to figure out where the, where the vernal pools are, where the vernal pool is, where the wetlands are, and um, to figure out if there's some way of saying that um, you know, some of these lots can be developed in a way that's sensitive to the wetlands and others may not be able to, to be developed at all, but they don't have that information yet. Um, so supposedly the developer is going to come to the Conservation Commission next week with this information. If he doesn't come with the information next week, um, what I understand is that the Conservation Commission is likely to then um, sort of restart the process and um, require that um, a legal ad be filed in the Dilly Hampshire Gazette and a butter's notices be sent out so that um, the residents who are waiting for something to happen will know that there's a public hearing coming up because they've continued this public hearing so many times that people have sort of lost track of the fact that public hearing is coming up. So anyway, they're giving, they're giving the developer one last chance to come to the meeting and show what he has to show. And then if he doesn't show up, then they are going to um, essentially restart the public hearing process. And then just to remind me, there's a performance bond of like, was it 265 or I can't remember the number. I, I didn't look at my file, my, yes. my large yeah. file. 288,000, I believe. Um, okay. So they have that performance bond, um, which isn't nearly enough to uh, finish the road. But in, uh, in 2013, the state of the road was better. And that's where that number came from. Yeah. Um, that number was developed in 2013 by the, by the town engineer. Okay, thank you. So, you know, you know, my perspective is, you know, that th this is the furthest east uh, portion of Amherst. It's up, up a hill, <clears throat> you know, and, uh, and uh, you know, go down Station Road. It's, you know, the last left. And part of the development is, is in Belchertown, part is in Amherst. Um, but this is where planning board, you know, we need to be diligent and, and reviewing and checking things because they did come before us uh, for the, you know, the, the extension um, or the release of lots. And those are times where, you know, we really need to review the entirety of the project. And um, later it was found out that the road had actually degraded more than we than we were than we knew, and and then you know the entire you know uh, subdivision there you know property owners within the subdivision were attending meetings saying that you know this this is an issue because we we we've got bad roads and and then Jason Skills gave us a lesson on how quickly pavement and kind of like just fall off a cliff. It can be fine for some years, and but when it goes, it goes quick. And that's what happened to Amherst, um, Amherst Hills because of the, the bump in the road due to the 2008 you know, recession and, and, and you, know, um, you know, just there's, a, there's just a bump. Anyway, you know, lesson learned. Um, for me personally on this. So we definitely want to keep an eye on this and, you know, make things, you know, make sure things are done according to plan. Janet, do you have, okay. So I'm sorry I didn't check my file before this, but I thought they were promising to finish the road this year when they were talking to us. Is that right? That is right. Yep. Yes. You were talking about like, you know, I remember Christine Gray Mullins talking about like what that, construction time is and it was until about November unless it's like a really warm November. So I, I had the impression it would be done like in July or so. So it seems like there's no movement on that. They had been replacing stormwater things that weren't working and things like that. But so so that hasn't happened. Okay. But you know I Chris can speak to this too, but I, I know like before the snow fly, there's still plenty of time, but not a whole lot of time. They they need to be doing things, you know, soon in October before the paving season ends. Chris? 
Well, that's right. The planning board asked them to um, do this work by this summer, by summer of 2020. Um, they said, Tofino said that they would do it by the end of the year. And that of course means the end of the paving season. But um, I think they ran into this issue of not having enough money to do the work as a result of the tie up that they've had with the conservation commission. So um, it's kind of a stalemate. So hopefully there will be some action next week. The conservation commission will either um, they could deny the the uh, requests outright. They could um, give Tofino another chance to come back and, and give the information um, and continue the public hearing again. Mm -hmm. So we may learn something next week. But it is true that they had said that they would finish this work by the end of the year, and the planning board had asked them to finish it by, I think, the end of July of 2020. Very good. Any other? Uh, oh, Andrew. Yeah, I was just so Chris, you'd mentioned probably makes sense for us to wait. And I think that does make sense for the Conservation Commission to weigh in. Is there that said, is there any, I guess, what would you think the likely outcomes might be that that we would need to decision? I'm just I'm trying to figure out if there's like some homework that we can do. So knowing timing is tight like we can we can be fully prepared to address any likely action items brought to us you know in that meeting i haven't heard from the uh residents recently um and that is possibly related to the lawsuit that the um developer has uh put against the residents so i don't know anything about their um negotiations i think there was some there was some talk and it's part of this lawsuit about um, the residents contributing to um, a fund to repair the road so that's all going on in the background and i'm not privy to that conversation um, if they're making progress there maybe the developer will have enough money to finish the road this year without selling the lots. So there are un unknowns here that I I don't know. Okay. Um, if nothing else changed, is the, would the town be plowing? Like you said, the road seems like it's plowable. The town would still plow through this winter season? I have not heard that the town won't plow it. That hasn't okay. come, so. Thanks. Um, okay, any other? Discussion on that? Okay. So, uh, status of the zoning subcommittee. Uh, I know that Chris Bestrut and myself were on this joint CRC committee town council meeting yesterday afternoon. And, you know, we presented our, our broad points, which were three bullets. Um, and you know it was an interesting discussion there there's there's lots to be done with regard to how you know planning board is going to interface with the crc you know of the town council because they you know they they have elected i think to take the lead on this and have pulled chris brestrip into that role that limits her involvement where she that she had previously with the zoning subcommittee but I, I, you know, I, I do feel that the planning board, is, you know, is going to have a very important role uh, with this zoning uh, bylaw, you know, update. So, um, and that remains to be seen. Uh, we sent a memo out. I know one board member had a concern that the memo wasn't factual. But again, I, we presented the three bullets. And then some other topics that were um, discussed that were discussed, you know, enough times that, that it merited just to be listed as sub bullets, so to speak. But we did not vote on those. And that was very clear within the memo. And I hope everybody understands that. And, uh, you know, I think uh, Chris would agree 
uh, with that. Did everyone get that memo? And, and, and does anyone have any questions on that, that what we presented to the, uh, the CRC in that memo? I mean, it was a little naked with the three bullets, because, but we had to get them something. And, you know, so <laughs> um, they want more. I think, you know, my, my takeaway from that is that the planning board has a lot of expertise that the town council does not have on these matters. And, um, and then we have the planning department. And I think we also have the avenue of, you know, out, outside consultants, because all the, I think it, my perception was the town council uh, members all have their own sort of perceptions of what the goals should be for the town, but just you know, uh, observing uh, the, the 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 meeting that we had yesterday, it seems like there's a lot more in common than 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 is different, you know, from what people want. But it seems like the differences end up being you know larger and and kind of disrupting what might you know move you know you know Amherst you know, uh, forward in, 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 in the, these respects. But, uh, but I was kind of encouraged that we're gonna get something done, but it's a big lift to rewrite the zoning bylaws. Uh, the zoning sub uh, committee was doing that piecemeal when we had town meeting. And now it's a whole different thing. We got, we have the zoning bylaws that really have been reformatted already uh, by, is it Ben? Ben, that's right. Ben Breger. Yeah. Yep. Ben McGregor. Breger, B R E G E R. Breger. Ben Ben Breger. So you know, so it, it's it's moving, and I I know I I I will be an advocate for the planning board. Uh, you know, providing our input because I, I do feel like our collective talents are are essential to that. But again, the you know, the town council is a legislative body. They are, they would, they set the goals. You know, they, they are, they are representative of uh, the town in that, in that, in that uh, respect. But I, I think we're a little bit in a holding pattern. Uh, um, the zoning subcommittee being on, you know, say hiatus uh, as we kind of figure things out. And then, you know, so there's a process, I think, that we will figure things out and whether that resuscitates the zoning subcommittee, whatever. But I think any real activity we take on now is just going to be counterproductive. It's, it's just not going to be worth anyone's, you know, time and energy because town council and the CRC have to figure out how they want to proceed and, and they have jurisdiction you know, on this matter, uh, clearly. And I, I don't know if Chris, if you want to add to that, but that, that was my takeaway. Well, I could just say that I think that the town, the CRC has made it clear that they do want to work with the planning board. And I don't see any reason to doubt that. I think a lot of the work is going to be done by staff. Um, a lot of the actual writing and it's going to be presented to the planning board and to the CRC. Um, the planning board had talked a few weeks ago about having setting aside some time um, on their agenda to discuss zoning issues, which I think is a really good idea. Um, they had actually done that in the past when this zoning subcommittee was was active. Um, so I think that you know having having that section in the planning board's agenda to discuss zoning issues is really, um, is really good. And I, and I hope that we'll go in that direction. So, but we'll, so, you know, there's, there's more to come on that. Um, I don't know if anyone has, uh, uh, Maria. Uh, yeah, I read the memo and I thought it was very clear on how it divided you know, what the planning board discussed and those three points were what we voted on and that all the other bits were from months and months of discussion where Christine Gray Mullen was trying to pull from us 
what our priorities were. And so those were recurring items we've definitely talked about, but you know, we didn't vote on them um, as far as like what we agreed were our priorities. And I think that, yeah, uh, the planning board has a lot to offer and in particularly with um, the planning staff, Chris and Pam being on board with us, um, they're the ones who every day work with the issues that come toward them where there's issues with the zoning bylaw that are just not working for people who are trying to use it. So I feel like um, the more we can have staff involved in those discussions with us, the more effective we'll be. And so um, I think, yeah, if we can set aside time during the planning board to, um, bridge between the CRC and us to get into the issues with um, Chris and Pam and um, that would be the most effective use of time right now as far as the various hands that are in the sort of um, zoning bylaw revision work. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, I think I've had enough feedback that we don't need to keep putting the status of zoning subcommittee on the agendas that we're not dissolving it, we're just putting on a hiatus and I don't know that we need to keep discussing that I don't yeah. know yeah but um yeah, yeah probably in a month maybe a, in a month or two things might kind of clear up and yeah but, right. but I agree yeah so okay. any other comment on the zoning subcommittee or interfacing with the the, the CRC which is again what's that what's the acronym um <laughs> Community Resources Committee. committee. Community Resources committee, uh, committee. So um, it's, you know, again, I'm, I'm impressed by, you know, what they've done this far, but it, I just feel like they're just kind of getting started, although they, they've been around for six months, but it just, it just does take time. And um, so Anything else on that? Okay, so um, so moving on, you know, this is kind of old business, new business, but the minutes, I wanted to address that. And I know uh, I'm, I'm, I have a viewpoint of what our minutes should be. I've done some research. I could, you know, pull some things up, but I, I feel like with our meetings being videotaped that is accessible to to all and i feel like we should you know link uh the amherst media recording of our sessions uh the minutes should never approach sort of a, a transcript sort of version of of what we do um and i feel like um, when I see 16 pages of notes um, that our staff at the planning department are spending time on something that they probably could be spending on more important things. That's just my opinion. But um, I wanted to have a discussion with the board in terms of how we uh, deal with minutes moving forward because they, they have expanded and and to the point where our minutes are not timely anymore uh, i think we have minutes out from july uh we're looking at what august 5th uh we have august uh, september 2nd minutes for but we have minutes missing from july um but anyway with with covid uh with the changing government um with uh with with chris brestrup now being pulled into the crc role more than you know or in addition to her her role with with the with the planning board um i just i just want to let let's get some efficiency here let's get some understanding let's get a consensus 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 oh, excuse me <laughs> of what we want the minutes to be moving forward. So, I mean, I pulled some stuff from the internet I, that was not distributed to, to all of you. Um, but my understanding is minutes should be, you know, summaries. They should not be word for word sort of things. They should not call out, you know, people 
saying certain things. Uh, it should be more focused on the decisions and the votes and the topics. And so I want to bring that to the board so we can move forward and hopefully help our planning department do more important things. Because again, if anybody wants to see what we do during our planning board meetings, Amherst Media has it. They can get it word for word. So, um, uh, Janet? So, um, I'm not an advocate of long minutes. <laughs> and I, I think there's a couple of things that are sort of at work here. One of them is that our meetings were getting so long. And so, you know, when you're talking for four hours, it's like two meetings worth of minutes in a way. And so I'm appreciating that we're having shorter meetings and I think our minutes would be shorter. I have, I think for me, the, the concern with minutes is sort of broken down and I have like two different views of minutes. Like one of them is that when we have a public hearing on a permit, um, I think it's important for the the, the the minutes to reflect the discussion. So, you know, we have a presentation by the project proponent and then the board asks questions. And I, in my view, a lot of times our decisions, the written decisions are very rote where we say, you know, the, the requirements of section 11.02 were met. And those, if the, for me, my concern for those is I think they'd be very easy for a legal challenge saying, well, the board didn't really discuss this or talk about it or analyze the information. We don't know what, what, what is the decision resting on. And so particularly in Amherst Media, that was one of my concerns. And, and so part I've seen, I think in the last year, an improvement in that and sort of saying, yeah, there's, um, you know, the setbacks were, you know, it's shorter, but it also matches the other things of the streets. So the more of that kind of meat and potatoes that goes into the decision, I think the stronger the decision is to against a legal challenge. And so the, the kind of back and forth during the hearing, I think is a way of sort of inoculating our, you know, sort of supporting our decisions that are a little thin on actual reasoning or supporting facts in there. So I don't, I don't, I think that discussion is important to put in the, the minutes. So anybody, you know, so even if we just made a cursory kind of like, yeah, you met this requirement, you can go back in the minutes and say, here's the discussion of that. Um, so those minutes, I think, should be kind of detailed, and I, I appreciate that. It also helps me remember. Um, for the rest of the things that we discuss, I'm really happy with summaries. And so, um, and I can see, you know, like he said, she said, they said, you know, whatever, and there's a lot of repetition. And so, but I do really want to hear what different members said in their thoughts, summarized. And so a question I have for Pam and Chris, you know, since we don't have transcript technology or whatever, computer technology, is that easier for you to do, to, to listen to the tape or your notes and summarize what each person said fully? Or is it easier for you just to kind of type out what everybody said as they said it? You know, because sometimes boiling things down takes more time. But, but also my final point after that question is, the AG has said that the minutes should be complete enough that someone who was not at the meeting understood the discussion. So, but do, is it, my question for Pam and Chris is like, what's, is it harder to summarize or is it harder to write out what was said? Uh, whoop, let me get my proper screen up here. Uh, Chris, I'll, I'll let you. I think it's harder to summarize because you have to really think about what was said. When you're just um, essentially kind of repeating what was said, it's easier because you just either listen to it or you look at your notes and you type it up. So it does take more, um, more thought to summarize things. But I think that we could you know, try to reach a happy medium um, where we don't actually write down verbatim what people are saying, but we, um, you know, if, if there's some particular statement that they make that's very important, we can try to capture that. Um, but do try to do a better job at summarizing. And I have the same, um, as far as content, I have the same concerns that Janet has about um, appeals. And I know that um, during appeals, the lawyers do look at the minutes. And so, 
you know, I try to capture as much of the discussion in the minutes as I can about, you know, why did we, why did the board make a certain decision? Um, on the other hand, I do think that we probably go overboard in writing too much. So um, Pam and I are going to try really hard to make the minutes shorter, but try to capture the essential um, statements that are made and try to not have them be 16 pages long. Maybe they won't be four pages long, but they'll be somewhere in the middle. And um, for decisions, you know, we, we in the past, we've taken the minutes and we've incorporated them into the decisions. And, um, you know, we're probably going to have to rethink that too, because that makes the decisions really long. In fact, um, for the Amherst Media decision, if we took the minutes from July 1st, July 15th, and August 5th and put them all together, we'd probably ended up, uh, end up with a 30 page decision. So we have to, you know, try to be a little more realistic. So Pam and I are going to work on that. Um, and we will also try to make sure that we get the essential facts um, incorporated. So how, how's that? Um, Andrew? Thanks, Jack. Um, yeah, I, I, I had some thoughts or questions, I guess. I'll just sort of spew them out. Um, is, you know, what is, what is like, what is the minimum legal requirement that we need to solve for if such a thing exists, you know, and, and would a video transcript fulfill that, right? Um, I see, I see the lawyer nodding. So I always know to look for the lawyers um, first. Um, I mean, do we use the Zoom transcript capabilities? Because I mean, I, I hope you're not, you know, typing things down verbatim or going to the video afterwards to do that because I, I know that is a capability that they that they uh, provide. You know, if if there's a if there's a need to have a verbatim type of session that you could refer to that. And then also, I just want to acknowledge that um, there's like few things I hate more um, than taking minutes. It's like an incredibly hard thing to do, and just really appreciate even even the the thought of reworking this and knowing that it's going to require extra effort on your time is really appreciated because that you know having that that aggregated view, but also from like a professional's perspective, is super helpful for for volunteers so thanks so a funny uh, story um that pam and i had because they said pam uh, i did minutes for the dog park task force meeting and i i had them within five minutes of the conclusion of the meeting <laughs> and i sent her the minute you know i don't i don't know uh uh jim pistrang is is the chairman of, the, of that i'm not sure what he did with him but he said, wow. But so, you know, I feel like the trend, you know, everything is there because of our technology with the video. And I, I would just really like to say, you know, you know, we, we took votes on this. We, you know, versus she said that, he said that, and that sort of thing. There's no way that needs to end up in the minutes. And I, and I feel like, once you get down, you know, again, uh, Chris said, you know, it's harder to summarize, but if you don't even have to summarize, but you just said, we address these topics, these votes were taken, uh, these motions were made, you know, and, and, and keep it at a high level. I mean, I, again, I've just, you know, Googled what should be in the minutes and, it, and it's very clear that it's our decision, you know, what should be there, but when I know that we have each and every meeting videotaped, uh, what is the point of Pam spending 16 hours, whatever it is of her time that is valuable, that could be helping Chris Brestrup with much more important things than, you know, it's like, I, I, I just, it, it really, uh, it really bothers me and Maria. And I, I'm sorry, can I, I oh, add one more thing? Andrew. Just, I, sorry, Maria, it was just, 
the the only other thing I was going to say is is as a potential solution too or or ideas, could the minutes just like refer to timestamps of the video transcript as well? No. All right. I should just talk to Janet. All right. I'm I'm done. Sorry for the. <laughs> uh, Interesting. Hmm. However, you know, Janet has an opinion. And I, I understand, you know, she's an attorney and that, but if, if we need to go to, you know, legal counsel, then that's fine. But I just feel like we're, we're out of control. And um, we're, we're, the whole point is that we're trying to, we have such a heavy lift, you know, in terms of the planning department and I would just like us not to worry about minutes mm -hmm. when anybody that wants detail can go and, and watch a video. And I, I am pretty sure that this day and age that that is fine as if these things are linked to our video and that our minutes are just abbreviated about the topics and the votes and things like that. So, um, uh, it just makes us, you know, if I'm wrong, but I would request Chris that you seek legal counsel with regard to what we need to produce in our minutes at a minimum. Mm -hmm. And then let's do that because there's video of each and every meeting that we have. And it just, it, it just, it's just a real sticking point for me. Is that, that video are, preserved on the town website kind of in perpetuity? Or I would hope so. That, that's the only that's the only issue. But, you know, that's that's what we need. But I would think it would be downloaded. And and linked and never lost. I mean, that's our technology. That's I I don't have any paper documents anymore. All mine are electronic documents for my work, you know, and that's what I rely. I don't I don't um this is this is different i feel like we need to do somewhat sort of a you know evolution revolution whatever and and not not be worried about the 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 written word when you have so much other more important things to be doing at this critical time you know for amherst so uh tom Can I, can I talk? I would Oh, I, well, I'm sorry, Maria. Okay, uh, I just wanted to say that um, I, I uh, when I first became, when I was first on the ZSC and we rotated taking minutes, I asked um, Chris Brestrup, like, what do minutes usually entail? And I asked the previous ZSC members who were on the ZSC, you know, what do you guys usually put in the minutes? And it's exactly what you said, Jack. It's literally the decisions made any major points that were made and a very short summary of next steps and that's a ZSC. that's not the planning board true but that's sort of the gist of what minutes are um and it was helpful for me because i'm you know a volunteer i've never been on boards and committees and then um it wasn't until maybe a year or two ago where our minutes suddenly became this very contentious thing. It used to just be, you know, we would each look at our, what we said and we were fine with it as far as decisions made or what we, you know, we, we looked at our own sort of words and it was fine. But then suddenly it became this thing where there were revision to minutes and revisions and revisions and we we're not only having the staff spend time revising them, we as a planning board, we're all spending time looking at the minutes and revising them. And it was, it was really <laughs> frustrating because exactly that we have so much more bigger issues to deal with than minutes in particular, since if it ever came to an appeal or a lawsuit, there's a video to refer to that is literally exactly what happened. So I just, I, yeah, I agree. I completely agree that something else needs to happen. And I would hate to have Pam and Chris have to rethink everything and, change the way they do things but at the same time I wonder if there's a way to uh, bullet point it or something so that yeah. it's no longer something that you guys have to spend 
you know, hours doing. Like, um, I, in fact, when I became chair of ZAC, I was so glad because the chair never has to take minutes because I just absolutely hate <laughs> minutes as well. And it's, 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 it's something that um, I don't know if council needs to be advised. I just wonder if we can just have it be, um, I don't know if it's, uh, Let's see. You know, the, the most recent minutes had um, what is it called? The um, development sort of application pieces in it, which is fine because then it's easier for them to just copy paste that into the development application. So, I mean, yeah. and since we reviewed it at the plan board, I mean, it's not like I'm rereading those, but I do read like what people said, and it's a lot of stuff that's not even like actual, yeah, decisions. It's a lot of just people's discussion. I don't feel like that's something that people can't gather from the videos. Um, mm. So I, I agree. I, I would hate to have staff do more thinking about this than just simply um, collecting the, the sentient points made and decisions made. And, um, yeah, and, yeah, I, and, and I, I, I think I, I looked at a town council uh, meeting that was five hours and it was, you know, 11 pages. Um, and then in the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission minutes are, you know, they're, they're, they're fairly, you know, one or two hour meetings, but, um, you know, yeah. a couple of pages. But, but anyway, I, I think it's really important because of what's going on with what's on Amherst, town of Amherst, government's plate, that mm -hmm. we don't get go down this road of where we are looking at uh, on a transcript sort of level yeah for this so um yeah. tom so i mean i was just going to mention that uh, you know and i'm just reviewing these minutes from the last few and i wasn't at the meetings and i don't know what meetings uh, what the content is of all of our meetings but it seems as though you know from Janet's perspective and possibly Chris's that there are some things that um, could potentially wind up in litigation or appeals, right? And so what are those things that we need to consider and do we need specific minutes for those that might be different from the next two thirds of our meeting, which is, you know, yeah. internal discussion or debates or, um, you know, review of something old or updates, that kind of stuff, maybe we can summarize. Maybe there's a reason for certain things where we're making decisions that people might call us on, um, that we want those things documented in more detail. So it might, you know, that might be the kind of the sort of middle ground is to consider that first, you know, approvals part of our meeting as something that gets more detail versus the rest of the meeting. So just something to keep in mind. Okay. Um, Janet. Oh, I never unmuted. So. Um, I don't know, we could go to the town attorney and ask an opinion, but this is what the AG is for. And so they have written extensively about open meeting law and what the requirements are minutes. And I actually, I was just, I, I've read their old handbook quite a few times and I see they have a new one and I haven't had a chance to look at that. And so I do have that same division. I, I do think that our questions and our mulling and our, you know, considering of the evidence in front of us is really important to a permit decision. And particularly with Amherst Media, it was just like, how many lawyers were there, you know, in suits that were being filed left and right? And all I could think of was, whatever we decide needs to be very tight and ironclad. And I think that the minutes of that, those three different hearings would really, the detail of that is gonna help support that decision. I've been in committees where we didn't, like in a general discussion, we never identified the speaker and we would just would summarize the discussion and so it wouldn't be like you know you know um andrew said this and i said that. that that does feel kind of like a little bit of a tennis ball or a debate and kind of a little maybe more personal but actually you know you were just bringing up the points that people made and not attaching to them and i do think the summarizing is harder but um i, I kind of leave it to pam and chris to figure out but i think if we look at the attorney general's guidance on minutes, which are part of open meeting law, I don't think saying to someone, oh, go watch that meeting, that's what we said, is going to satisfy open meeting law or the requirements for minutes. Um, we're all, all, well, of us are very tech savvy, and then we have people in our town who are going to go sit in a cold tent just to get internet access. And 
I don't think it's reasonable to expect a, you know, somebody who's interested in what the planning board talked about to have them go through a four hour transcript. But I really hope we don't have any more four hour meetings too. So I think that shorter meetings will solve this problem. But I think the yeah. AG's office is the resource. Well, I would ask uh, Janet that you, um, if you have references that you provide that uh, to Chris Brestrup and, and I mean, I think it, it's really going to be, you know, for the sake of efficiency, going to be, you know, a benefit to the planning department and to the planning board that we get this, this down, how we're going to proceed uh, with the minutes. So if, if you could provide what you're referencing to Chris Prestrup, I'd appreciate it. Chris? So I wanted to answer um, Johanna's question about whether um, the transcripts are, or the, not the transcripts, but the videos are on the Amherst Town website. And I think the Amherst, the town of Amherst has a YouTube channel and I've never delved into it, but I understand that our um, meeting recordings are on the YouTube channel and they're also on the Amherst media channel, but I'm not aware of them being on the town website. So I just wanted to clarify that. And you know, Chris, they should be on our website downloaded and preserved forever. I mean, mm -hmm. what an easy thing to do. Yep. So, and that, I guess, Got to work with IT. My, my, my point is that that it would be we would have a downloaded version of the video, and uh, that would be there for for all, and mm -hmm. for, for uh, perpetuity. Is that the word? <laughs> um, uh, Johanna. Thank you. Um, like, do we need a motion on this? Because it seems to me like. Are like we're interested in shorter, more succinct minutes that still have enough detail that they stand up to legal appeal. So we kind of want staff to thread that needle, and then, but like mostly like free up staff time so that they can focus on the important work, rather than I don't know spending hours going over minute reviews. I don't, I don't, so I don't know if we need a motion or if we just need kind of a gentle direction, but that. Well, I, I, it's an ask and I, I think that uh, we are in general agreement. Um, I don't think it's a needs a vote. Um, I mean, I just, I see heads kind of shaking. Let's, let's, you know, dive into this further and then and, and get more information and, and, and just understand what we really need uh, for these things. So um you know with that said um we do have minutes to approve um whoop doug well i was gonna i wasn't gonna say anything but i think i need to um uh i spent a lot of time doing minutes when i started out as an architect doing weekly construction meetings and our you know, we were required to get minutes out within 24 hours of, of the completion of the meeting. And when you give yourself a deadline, your minutes get very short and very succinct. Um, so, uh, you know, frankly, during the time I've been on the board, the thing that's irritated me the most about the minutes is the long delay with being issued. Um, so I feel like if we were more insistent on the minutes coming out before the next meeting so that we could review them and vote on them while we still remembered what the meeting was about, um, that might help shorten the minutes. Um, yeah. And then you brought up that we've got a couple to approve. And I, I guess I was wondering whether you're looking for a motion to approve or you wanna have some conversation first. Well, we'd have to take them piece by piece. Um, the August 5th and September 6th are, have been drafted. The July have not been drafted yet because those are tied into the Amherst Media project. Is that correct, Chris? 
July 15th have been drafted and approved. But July oh. 1st has not been, um, not been uh, sent to you yet. So you still have July 1st. July 1st. Yeah. What, what was that one about? Your... That was the beginning of the Amherst Media. Amherst Media. And, and the end of the common school. So um, we did half of it because we had to get the common school decision out. And now we're working on the other half having to do with Amherst Media. So okay. that'll be at your next meeting. Okay, so I'm I'm just bringing up the minutes on my on my end here for August August fifth. There was an August fifth um, minutes that we wrote, and then there were comments that um, Janet McGowan uh, sent us, which we incorporated into another document that Pam has, and Jack may have it as well. Okay. So I did have objection to the to the August fifth comments. Um, I, I am not in agreement with Janet's modifications to these minutes. Um, as I look down, page thirteen and fifteen. Okay. Yeah. So thirteen. Um, I don't know how to put this, but um, okay. So Janet has has uh, said something. You know, wants to add something here that, that that she said on page thirteen, and then page fifteen. But what is on page fifteen bothers me more. I guess. Um, I just I think there's there's um, there's some discussion that happens within the planning board, and I don't know that that detail needs to end up in the minutes. And you know when someone says someone said something, I don't I just I don't really want. Um, I don't. I don't think we need to go into that level of detail. I'm a little upset about uh, the changes that that was proposed on on particularly page 15, um, with regard to someone violating open meeting law. I think. I don't think we need to to have that <laughs> that presented within our minutes. I think that is that is not not appropriate and that and that really brings me a little bit of uh, uh, concern about you know the detail of the minutes I mean let's discuss amongst ourselves but calling out someone you know violating something I don't think that needs to end up there I mean it, it may happen but I don't I don't want to make a, a written record of of, of what someone you know said in that in that fashion, it just doesn't set well with me. So I would, um, with regard to these August fifth minutes, I would, um, you know, move that we approve the the original minutes without Janet's changes, uh, based on reeling back the level of detail that we're putting in there, and also. We're a team, you know, we, we work as a board together and we need to be, you know, respectful of each other. And I don't think this level of detail helps the board, the, the town of Amherst. And I just, I just, I'm not comfortable with those changes. Um, so that's, that's my opinion on that. Um, so Jack, um, I sent these changes to you and Pam and Janet. And so the other board members haven't, um, necessarily seen these changes. 
because we're uh, we couldn't get it posted in time. So I see. So I don't know if you want to go back and show people what was written on page thirteen and what was written on. Page okay, so page thirteen was added. Uh, okay, can you put that in one page view? Yes. And then. Can you see in. it? Okay. Zoom okay. in more. I mean, we could zoom on our end too, but there you go. Okay. Um, so, um, I mean, someone you know, stating that someone was confused, just, you know, that does not belong in minutes. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, it just, it just doesn't fit. And I know that Pam and Chris put a lot of time into making something that is consistent with, you know, the, 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 the many, many years that they have produced planning board um, minutes in the past. So um, I, I like to take personal sort of innuendos out of the minutes and I think that is not consistent. And then um, on page 15 is, is I'm, I'm really uncomfortable with because it, it's calling out a former, you know, uh, board, uh, Madame Chair, Christine Gray Mullen <laughs> and um, and I just, I don't, it just doesn't, it doesn't sit well with me whatsoever. So I trust the, the tenor that, that was produced by the planning department on these minutes uh, is sufficient to approve. Jack Maria has her hand up and Doug. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking at so many different things here. Um, um, I, I don't know who is first, Doug? Yeah, uh, you made a motion and I wanted to second it. Okay. Um, any discussion, I'll have Maria. Um, I was gonna make discussion, but I'm fine just moving to approve the meeting minutes as written and not accept Ms. McGowan's revisions. So okay. I guess I'm seconding, seconding Doug's motion. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Janet. So I would love to put the August 5th meeting into the history books because from my point of view, the whole discussion about the zoning subcommittee and appointing Doug as um, temporary or permanent, I think it was permanent chair, came completely out of the blue. And um, I found it really disturbing that all these, you know, everybody, so many people on the board seem to have been talking about these things and it wasn't in the agenda. And I thought that, that the fact that we were talking about an item these two items of great importance without posting it and doing following the opening meeting law was very disturbing to me. Um, so I would love to put that in the past. I'd like to pretend it didn't happen, but it did happen. And so those are important issues to me. Um, I, I don't know what we're calling out. It's just that it just happened. And I, you know, two media outlets covered this. People called me and said they thought this was an open meeting law violation. You know, it doesn't look pretty. It wasn't pretty at the time, but it actually happened that way. And these are the things that I did say. So, you know, if you want to vote that to take out that part, you know, I can't, I can't just, you know, I can't change that vote, but, you know, it's hard to sit in a position, often a minority view and read minutes where what you've said isn't in there and other people's points are laid out sort of carefully. And so, what I'm doing often in the minutes is putting in something that I said, or something Michael Burt Whistle said, 
And I think it's worth to be in there. And if you're uncomfortable with what happened at that meeting, it shouldn't be because I'm talking about it and writing about it later, but what actually happened at the meeting, which was actually quite disturbing to me. And I hope we never do that again. Thank you. I have nothing else to say. Uh, Maria? Um, I just, since we're on this page, that red paragraph, um, let's see. I think the last half of the paragraph did not happen at the meeting. So I, I agree with that some of this doesn't seem like it's about representing what happened at the meeting, but an opinion or bringing up um, something that's not an actual meeting occurrence. Uh, the, the sentence that starts with later, Ms. Gowan said that Chris Dean Gray Mullen had presented the end of the ZSC as a done deal to her. That maybe happened. It didn't happen at the planning board meeting. So I feel like there is something else here that should not be here. Um, yeah, exactly. You're, you're right, Janet, that it wasn't on the agenda. So we didn't do the things that were not on the agenda that evening. And that actually happened. So um, the things you're bringing up are correct in that we didn't make Mr. Marshall chair and we didn't dissolve the ZSC because we realized, oh, okay, yeah, right. We should have put it on the agenda. So for, you know, you're raising these points and that's exactly what happened. It's just, there's these other layers to it that I agree with Jack. I don't think are right to be in the meeting minutes and, and, and our minutes never were this way in the past. They were never um, subjective opinions thrown in. It, was, it used to be just bullet point sort of, here was a decision, here was a summary, or here was a, um, a point made that you know, got folded into the, the uh, development application. But all this extra stuff did not used to be in the minutes. And I, I agree, I, I, I don't agree with adding this other extra layer into our minutes. And, I, and I, I guess I stand behind the motion, the second to Doug's motion. I feel like we're doing exactly what we said we shouldn't be doing, which is spend all this time on minutes, but here we are, so. Okay, uh, I don't see any other hands raised and uh, I guess we can. Um... Doug, can I ask a question? Yes. So, I thought you made that motion, but Maria. I did. I did. Okay. And then it got. And so, and Doug seconded, seconded it. And I twice. thought I seconded it. <laughs> Doug so seconded it. And then, and then, know. and uh, yes. Okay. Got it. Um, and I think it's okay that the chair makes, or vice chair, whatever I am uh, this time, but uh, to make a motion. Correct, Chris? Yeah. Um, so uh, without further discussion, the August 5th uh, uh, minutes as originally presented uh, by Chris Brestrup uh, need to be approved. And that is the, the vote. So w without any edits. So um, roll call. Tom? Uh, do I abstain from this because I was not at that meeting? Uh, actually, I saw where you don't need to, but it, it, Chris, maybe. Probably a good idea to abstain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I abstain. Okay. Andrew? I also abstain. Okay. Janet? No. Uh, Doug? Yes. Janet? I thought oh, I excuse me. Uh, uh, Maria. <laughs> Sorry. Maria. Yes. All right. And Johanna? Abstain. And myself, yes. So that's 3 1 to approve the August 5th minutes. Mm -hmm. And the September 2nd minutes. Again, I, I apologize. This is the whole minutes thing, but it just—it's a process thing that I hope we all appreciate that we we kind of understand and get on the same page. 
Um, and I'm just looking for, oh, okay. September 2nd ones. There weren't any recommended changes that we know about, but there might be some offered tonight. Yeah. So for the September 2nd minutes, anyone want to make a motion to approve? Any discussion first? I see none. Oh, Andrew. Uh, excuse me, I was just going to say, absent any discussion, I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. And Doug? Second. Okay, so roll call, um, Tom? Aye. Andrew? Approve. Janet? Approve. Doug? Approve. Maria? Approve. Johanna? Abstain. And myself approve. Uh, if I can right. say, sorry to interrupt, Jack, but just like reading those detailed minutes is like a walk down memory lane. I remember like where I was and, you know, oh, that's when I went to get a drink. So like it's, <laughs> kind of, it's, it's sort of interesting. Um, <laughs> it, it, yeah, I mean, my how two weeks fly by, huh? <laughs> uh, okay, so um, I've really messed with the agenda here. So new business. Mm -hmm. Do we have new business other than what we talked about with regard to the minutes? No, new business. Okay, uh, form A and R subdivision applications. Yes, we have one, and Pam's going to show it to us. This is, I'll, I'll explain it. Um, this is a um, property that's come before you in the past. Um, it's Jack Brown on Bay Road. And you saw Jack um, when he was requesting some approval of his driveway. And um, he had a very long driveway with a place in it that was steep. So you had to grant him a special permit to um, allow him to build that long driveway. He owns this piece of property in yellow that's outlined in yellow. And um, this map is, let's see, um, north is to the right. So um, it's on the south side of Bay Road. Um, his house is as shown, it's that little pink um, rectangle. And many of you will remember the site visit that we took and he explained at that time uh, how he was going to um, subdivide the property into um, essentially two flag lots. Right now, his lot outlined in yellow is not really a flag lot because it has enough frontage on Bay Road, but he's going to, he's proposing to um, divide it. And the red line uh, Pam drew on this map to show approximately where the new property line would be for the new uh, property. And now we can go and look at the, um, so here we have Bay Road is still on the right. So North is still to the right. And the new lot is um, lot two, which is way to the left. And the new lot doesn't have the usual building circle drawn on it, but we know that the building circle can fit there. The building circle needs to be 200, uh, feet in diameter, um, and the far um, west, uh, excuse me, far to the left, which would be southern um, property line is over 200 feet. So we know that there, that a circle of 200 feet in diameter can fit in that uh, location. So when um, Jack comes to the, what's he going to be doing? Comes to the uh, special permit um, process with the Zoning Board of Appeals, which he actually might have already done. I don't really remember. But anyway, um, at that time, they would determine where the house is going to go and where the building circle is going to go. So I think um, everything considered, this plan does what it's supposed to do. It's got enough lot area for in the RLD zoning district, you have to have um, four acres for a, um, a flag lot. And this has over four acres. It's got 7.3 acres. 
and the um, access strip is over is 40 feet wide, which is fine, and it's got um, over 40 feet of, of frontage. So, and and we had this reviewed by Jason Skills, the town engineer. So we don't see any problems with the planning board authorizing um, Jack as their new chair to sign this ANR plan. And for those of you who haven't been on the planning board before, an ANR plan is really an acknowledgement by the planning board that this particular um, subdivision of lots does not have to go through the subdivision approval process. Subdivision approval process is reserved for, um, for, for delineation of lots that includes a roadway. And in this case, there's no roadway. There is a common driveway, but there's no roadway. So, um, I'm sure that you'll see a subdivision eventually, but for now, this is approval not required. It, that means there's no subdivision approval required here. So you're just acknowledging it doesn't need to go through the subdivision approval process. So there's really no vote that needs to be taken. It's just the planning board needs to kind of, by consensus, agree that Jack can sign this plan as an approval not required. Any questions? Uh, Janet? Hi, um, did we, is this the lot that we went and visited and did a site visit for? Yeah. Okay, and then did you say that the seven acre plot is gonna be turned into a subdivision? No. Or, oh, I no. thought you just said that there'll be a subdivision later. No, there's not gonna be a subdivision later. There's actually oh. going to be a, a special permit with the Zoning Board of Appeals, but they may have gone through that process already. Um, they can choose to go through the A&R process and then go through special permit, or they can do the opposite. They can go through a special permit and then A&R. So they, I, I think they might have gone through that this, this time. They might have done special permit and then A&R. And so this is the property we saw with Bucky Sparkle and the habitat for the, the um, turtle, right? That's correct, right? yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Doug? Uh, Chris had mentioned that the, the driveway had had a waiver on it. Um, will we be asked to do another waiver on the new lot or are they sharing the same driveway? They actually, it's all coming back to me now. <laughs> they actually showed you a driveway and you gave them a special permit on a driveway. Yeah. It's the existing driveway, which you see on this property with the new lot. So you have actually approved the new driveway layout and the new driveway grading as a, a special permit. And I think, I don't know when that was done, but something tells me it was done in January. Um, no, I, I do vaguely remember it, so it was a little later than that. Oh, so it was after Doug joined. Yeah. Did. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that new driveway doesn't show up on this plan. So why, if we did the special permit six months ago, why wouldn't we have done the ANR at the same time? Um, that's a good question. Um, it's not really required to do it at the same time. Um, and it may just be that um, that the applicant wasn't ready for whatever reason. Um, maybe he just hadn't decided to sell a lot and now he's decided to sell it. So he needs to carve it off in order to sell it. Um, so I, I don't really know what his what his thought process was. Well, then I'll ask one more question, which is, if this came up as a special permit several months ago, are those of us who were not on the board at the time allowed to vote on this? Or is this a completely separate process and we can all vote on it? It's a completely separate process and you don't need to vote on it, but if you want to vote on it, you can. You can just kind of nod your heads um, by consensus, which is what you do when you're in the town room usually. I, I, I say to the board, 
are you in agreement that the chair can sign this plan? And the board members nod their heads. Every once in a while, a vote is taken, but um, it's up to you whether you want to take a vote on this or not. Um, I see no other hands. So without any objection, I'll sign this. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, upcoming ZBA applications. I'm not aware of any new ones. Um, they still are working on the comp permit for 138 Northampton Road primarily. Chris, okay. can yeah, you add? Small new ones, but I don't think there's anything that the planning board would particularly care to look at. Um, yeah. Okay. Upcoming uh, SPP, SBR, SUB applications. Yes, there are two. And one, I just brought it up on my phone. Let's see if I can bring it back. Um, so there is a, uh, an application by the Kestrel Trust, and I may have mentioned this to you last time. Uh, for 37 Bay Road, it's land that, um, actually you saw the uh, A&R plan for this. Um, Don Allison, who's an attorney in town, owns property, um, actually, yes, off Bay Road. And is that what I'm talking about? No, that's not what I'm talking about. Never mind, that's another Kestrel Trust project. Um, this project has to do with the Epsteins, Cy and... Um, his wife, whose first name I can't remember, um, the, the Epstein's own property in um, Amherst, owned property in Amherst. And it has a pond on it and it's got a beautiful um, mid-century modern house. And Kestrel Trust is uh, acquiring the property and they're going to turn the house into an office. Uh, for their uh, for the Kestrel Trust, and so um, that's going to be brought to you as a site plan review, and I think that's coming on October seventh. And the other one that we have coming up is um, the town has um, been made aware that they have money as a result of the CARES Act, um, which is related to COVID nineteen, and it's money from the federal government, um, which funnels through the state, and as a result of having this money, they want to purchase something for the town. Decided, or they, they, they think that they may have decided, although they're not there yet, to purchase comfort stations. And these comfort stations are um, kind of prefabricated, and there are four of them. And uh, when I know exactly where they're going to be located, I'll, I'll tell you that. But that would have to come before the planning board. Um, it would probably have to go to the design review board too. Um, so they're just little comfort stations. I think they just have like one stall, you know, one female and one male. But um, we certainly need public restrooms in town. And so that's, this would provide that um, and the town wouldn't have to pay for it. So the town manager and Dave Zomek and the building commissioner are working on this project together. That's the only other plan that I know that's going to be coming to you. Thank you. Um, Jack, Janet, Janet has her hand. Hi, Janet. Is a comfort station a portal lab? It's a, it sounds, a comfort station sounds lovely, but I'm not quite sure what you mean. Is it a portal lab? In it's a little building that's permanently installed. Um, oh, so it's okay. not portable. It's um, Actually, if you've been to um, the West and you know gone to the national parks, it's sort of reminiscent of what you might see in a national park. In fact, the one, the one that I saw had um, like stone around the bottom and board and batten siding, and a roof that looks like it's made out of cedar shingles or something. There are different uh -huh. um, designs that you can get, and you can get a design with horizontal uh, clad uh, horizontal clapboards and the metal roof. So we're looking at different styles. Um, so hopefully, you know, if we put one in or near the downtown, it's not going to look like it belongs in a national park. 
So we're trying to work on, on those issues. Um, but anyway, that, that may be coming to you if the town manager decides that he wants to spend the money in that way. Thanks, Chris. Um, so we're moving on to planning board committee and uh, liaison reports. Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Uh, I have nothing uh, to report. And I think these other positions we don't have, we can just pass over. Uh, we have discussed them. We have filled some vacancies. Thank you. Um, Tom, for the, the CPA committee. Uh, Doug, for the Ag Commission. Oh, excuse me. Um, Matt, Andrew, for the, for the CPA committee. Um, and Doug for the Ag Commission and Tom for the Design Review Board and the Zoning Subcommittee with Maria and Janet is, is solid and, and with the, regard to the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, we'll get an alternate at a later date. Uh, report of the chair, I think we're, we're good. We, we took on, you know, some, a lot of you know, peripheral sort of um, topics, you know, process type pro, uh, uh, topics. And, and uh, I thank you all for kind of working with us on that. Um, Chris, report to staff. Well, I wanted to say two things. Um, for the people who were newly nominated for these positions, I need to transmit that information to the town manager so he can appoint you. Um, so if you wanted to go to one of their meetings, um, you would need to wait until you were actually appointed in order to vote. But I'll try to get my part of this done as quickly as possible. Um, so, and the other thing is Jack asked me last time, he said that um, a lot of cities and towns are getting all this money and he wondered, is Amherst applying for any money? And, and we have been um, working on trying to get some money to help us out with COVID-19 um, and other things. And um, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of a rundown and what we've done so far. Um, we did get um, $200,000 from um, the Housing Trust and they've set up a rental assistance program um, and that's being run by Community Action. Um, and they're uh, you know, trying to get help out to people who are um, threatened with well, they're not currently threatened with eviction, but they might be threatened with eviction uh, once the uh, eviction moratorium is lifted. But anyway, people who can't pay their rent, essentially. Um, the other thing is we have applied for um, CARES Act funding, which is associated with the Community Development Block Grant. And I'll write this down and, and send it to Jack. Um, but uh, we applied for $400,000. Um, what we actually were awarded was about I think 321,000 and it's going to go for a number of different good causes. One is that um, we're going to be offering uh, micro gr grants to micro businesses and micro businesses are businesses that are, uh, have five or fewer um, employees, including the owner and whose owner is um, income eligible. So we have a certain amount of money for that. We have some money for the survival center um, I believe we have money for family outreach for them to hire somebody to um, help them with their caseload these days. And we have some money for Craig's doors. So altogether, um, 321,000 is going to be distributed among, distributed among those groups. Um, back at the beginning of the summer, we applied to the Lawrence and Lillian Solomon Foundation and we got $10,000 that um, the money went to the bid and the bid, um, helped the, the restaurants in town to set up outdoor dining. So um, many of the umbrellas that you see are from this grant, um, plantings and other um, amenities that, that help the um, restaurants make the outdoor dining more uh, enjoyable. And then the other thing we've been working on, and so far we have not been successful, but we're, we continue to work on it, is um, Mass DOT, Department of Transportation, has a shared streets and spaces grant program. 
And um, you may have heard about this if you read the Gazette. Um, Northampton did get a, a grant from uh, MassDOT and they um, reconfigured their street and they actually weren't, uh, that project was recently removed because it had various problems. But anyway, East Hampton has also gotten some money from MassDOT to do various um, realignments of their roadway and bike path. And you might have seen that in the Gazette this morning. So we're applying for some money to um, do some work in our downtown, um, which may include lights and umbrellas and planters and different things. We're trying to extend the um, dining season as far into the fall as we can. I think part of that might be that we're going to try to get some heaters um, for the restaurants so that we can have you know, extended outdoor dining. But anyway, we're probably going to be applying for about, <coughs> my guess is, you know, 150,000, something like that. We've already uh, applied twice and haven't been accepted, but um, we're going to try one more time. And so that's, uh, you know, a lot of what the planning department has been doing over the summer, over the course of the late spring and summer is applying for these grants and trying to get money to help people in town who are suffering as a result of COVID-19, suffering economically. So that's my report. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm, uh, Chris, I'm wondering if, if we shouldn't have a line item in our agenda with regard to those sorts of efforts, just at a, you know, very, I'm not even sure what it'd be because you touched upon so many different funding sources, you know, the community and development block, you know, grant mm -hmm. is, you know, unique from everything else. But I'm wondering, isn't that appropriate for yep. discussion yep. within, you know, for the planning board? Um, At least to report to you on these things. Yeah, because it's or worthwhile. Maybe, or maybe we have something to offer, you know, uh, along those lines. But, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're big initiatives important to the town, you know, from a funding, you know, perspective that uh, perhaps, you know, we can help in some fashion, but uh, it'd be nice to be linked into that. Yep, definitely. Okay, yeah. do that. Uh, Johanna? Forgive me if this is off topic, but I know that for it has to do with the shared streets and spaces grants program. Like, um, obviously downtown dining is important. I don't know how many bites at the apple we have, but um, I've been thinking a lot about just school transportation and the sheer number of kids that actually live within kind of a reasonable walkable and bikeable distance to school. And especially as we're trying to do social distancing on school buses and transportation being a key factor in terms of when kids actually go back to school, whether there's any kind of potential there. I think East Hampton, that was kind of their primary driver for their, um, their grant. And I, you know, I don't know whether there's potential for that in Amherst. We'll think about that. We're working towards getting this grant application in by the end of the week. So mm -hmm. we're kind of under a lot of time pressure, but I'll mention that because anyway, we're going to have a meeting about it tomorrow. Thanks, Chris. Okay, so uh, I think we can, uh, without any other um, hands raised, and I think we're going to adjourn it. And uh, yeah. Less than a three hour meeting, which is a really good thing for us. I thank you all and you know, welcome Johanna again, you know, Tom and, and Andrew. Um, appreciate it. We, we did a lot of uh, housekeeping type items, you know, this evening and um, look forward to our new, our new group, our new team. So hope you all have Whatever it means of your evening. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Thanks, all. It's Jen. great to meet you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.